Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to American Vindicta. Today we have on with us our brother Billy, uh, Sinner Saved. We're going to do a good, strong gospel message today. So, be ye not in fear. The Lord has overcome the world. I thank you everyone for listening to us today, for your prayers, for your donations to Billy's ministry and to our ministry. We thank you so much on behalf of our families for what you do for us. Every day I go to the post office and I pick up a card and we've been getting Christmas letter cards in and it's beautiful to see the body of Christ reaching out, praying with each other, still wanting to touch each other's lives. And so for all you who send cards, we thank you so much. We keep every one of them. For all of you going through a hard time right now, know that Jesus has overcome the world, and that our hope is not in this world, but in the Father and in the Son. So turn your weary woes to him, and may his glory and his grace bless you in these harder days. Billy, Mike's yours, brother. sir warm greetings friends near and far the lord jesus christ be magnified forever and ever his loving kindnesses tender mercies and compassions are new every morning friends great is his faithfulness his mercy endureth forever this is sinner save coming at you 
with the following short evangelistic gospel message, which is sponsored by Mr. Doug Thornton of American Vindicta and also sponsored by preacher Wayne Boyd in the Brothers and Sisters in Christ Jesus at First Baptist Church located in Almont, Michigan, USA. And God willing, this broadcast will reach you, Lima Charlie, loud and clear. It is my hope and prayer unto God Most High, the only Holy Father, that His only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, the Lord our righteousness, be greatly exalted, that His everlasting gospel be clearly proclaimed, that the pride of mere flesh and blood men be humbled, and that His elect saints be greatly encouraged, cheered, and comforted in these evil and perilous times. Friends, please consider having paper and pencil handy to jot down the scriptural references for your own follow-up study. And so we begin with the weekend gospel message to follow for all hands. Heads up! Please find enclosed encouragement in so great salvation by the perfect and finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ in saving poor, needy, and wretched sinners. By his sovereign free grace, that is to say, almighty God and his unmerited favor to save me and you from our sins and from hell. Reading from Proverbs 11.4, righteousness delivereth from death. When a poor sinner is brought to judge of himself according to the word of truth, then is he truly wise. When he sees the exceeding sinfulness of sin, he is humbled before the Lord. When he considers the wages of sin is death, he fears and trembles. But when he is enabled to believe he is righteous in the sight of God, then he is truly happy. His soul rejoiceth because his eyes have seen the salvation of God, and he hath found a righteousness that delivers from death. It is never well with the soul, but when in simplicity, in godly sincerity, it forms its judgment of sin and righteousness from the word of the Lord. For carnal reason and fleshly wisdom pervert and draw it aside from the truth as it is in Jesus. Sin is a transgression of the law, which is holy, just, and good. Death hath passed upon all men. Verily, then, I am a cursed sinner and have need to cry daily, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Lord, deliver my soul from death. What is righteousness but a perfect obedience to the law of God? I have no righteousness in myself. I have sinned. A sinner righteous in himself is a contradiction in terms. But here is our mercy as by one man, meaning Adam, sin entered into the world, and death as the curse of sin, so by man, the Lord Jesus Christ, came righteousness, and as a blessing of it, deliverance from death. Where can we turn our eyes? To whom can we look for this righteousness, this blessing, this deliverance? To the man, mediator, surety, and representative of his people, Jesus only. He is emphatically styled Jesus Christ, the righteous. See 1 John 2, 1. This is the comfortable testimony the spirit of truth bears of Jesus. He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we who have no righteousness in ourselves might be made the righteousness of God in him. Please see 2 Corinthians 5, 21. So the righteous Jehovah, who loveth righteousness, and whose countenance beholds the thing that is just, is well pleased with the members of Jesus. For they are clothed with his righteousness. The Lord laid their sins upon Jesus. The Lord imputes the righteousness of Jesus to them without any works of theirs. So he delivers them from deserved death. So he justifies them in righteousness unto eternal life. Every believer is as perfectly righteous in Christ as if he had never sinned. Here is thy happiness, O believer. It is thy joyful privilege thus to judge of thyself. 
To live in this view of thyself is agreeable to the truth of God's word. It is witnessed to thy soul by the comforter, the Holy Spirit, through faith. This makes the soul joyful in truth. This animates to all holy obedience in love. This gives confidence in prayer, comfort in life, deliverance from death, and boldness at the awful bar of judgment. Thus, as it is written in Romans 5.21, grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And that was from preacher William Mason a long time ago. Our mighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, cried out victoriously in Revelation 22, 12. Behold, I come quickly. These words were sent to Christians who were suffering severe persecution because of their faith in Christ. They did not need a promise of some far-off arrival of the Lord. They needed to know that the Lord was on the way and would bring the needed deliverance shortly. One of the things that this teaches us is that when the scriptures speak of the Lord coming, it is not always a reference to the final day of the Lord, when Christ shall return and bring this creation to an end. Sometimes, friends, it refers to Christ coming by means of his providential control of all things to bring relief to his saints in the here and now of their suffering. You children of God who suffer here, this promise is for you. Do not think your Lord is uncaring of the suffering you endure, no matter what kind of suffering it is or what is the cause of it. He knows about it. In fact, he sent it, and he sent it to bring you good. It may uh, last longer than you want it to or even think is wise, but the beginning and end of it are ordained by the Lord. The same voice that sent the trial, shall declare the end of it. Excellent. From uh, preacher Joe Terrell. A rock that stands forever is Christ my righteousness. In him I stand unfearing in everlasting bliss. Christ is my boast in glory. All wrath for me is over. The judgment of the sinner, it frightens me no more. There is no condemnation. There is no hell for me. The torment and the fire my eyes shall never see. For me there is no sentence. For me there is no sting. For Christ my Lord who saved me will shield me with his wing. No angel nor a devil. No danger, fear, nor fight. No foe, no tribulation, no throne, nor power, nor might, nor height, nor depth. No creature that has been or can be can pluck me from thy bosom, can sever me from thee. My heart leaps up with gladness. Grief cannot linger there. Her voice sings high in glory, bathed in the sunshine fair. The fountain of my singing is Jesus there above. The sun that shines upon me is Jesus and his love. Old gospel hymn, friends, uh, stand up for Jesus. A reading from Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth his Spirit into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son then an heir of God through Christ. What a promise. Accepted in the beloved. A reading from Ephesians 1, verses 5 through 6. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Think for a moment of the glory and majesty of Almighty God. If a believer ponders in his heart the wonder of God's grace, he soon realizes his own unworthiness and utter vileness. How could it ever be that he, before whom the moon and the stars are not pure in his sight, accepts such sinners as us? Yet the infallible word of God declares that he indeed has accepted some men in the beloved. Who are they? How are they made accepted? 
according to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, they are those who have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. They are those who have been chosen in Christ from the foundation of the world. They are those who have been predestinated to the adoption of children by Christ. They are those who have been accepted in Christ. They are those who have been redeemed by Christ, forgiven their sins by Christ, illuminated in Christ, gathered in Christ, and given an inheritance in Christ. They are those who have been given faith after the, they heard the gospel. They are those who have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in Christ. This was all done for these to the praise and the glory of God's grace. This was accomplished for them by him who doeth all things after the counsel of his own will. To the hopeless, and only the hopeless, this is good news. Excellent from preacher Tim James Beyond explanation, I cannot begin to explain to you the truth of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Exclamation is, uh, explanation is not my business. Proclamation is. The deity and humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ are indisputable Bible truths, though inconceivable to us and unexplainable by us. An old theologian once said, deity is not to be explained, but adored. Here's a glorious fact to be received by faith and embraced with loving gratitude. The Lord of glory, the eternal Son, joined himself to humanity, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh. He did this out of love for us and in order to save us from our sins by the sacrifice of himself. And uh, that was from an unknown preacher of righteousness. The reconciliation of enemies. Romans 5.10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What a word of promise there. Reconciliation implies a previous state of friendship and communion. In unfallen Adam, the head and representative of our race, we enjoyed a blissful relationship with Almighty God. When Adam sinned, however, that unity and closeness was ended and all men became sinners. That is not to say that Jehovah's covenant love for his chosen people was infected in any way. His love was certainly not turned to hatred. His loving kindness for his people is like himself from everlasting to everlasting. Talk about good news. The love of God for his elect was not interrupted. But the communion and fellowship was, God did not change, but we did. We became enemies against God. Something had to be done about the sins of his fallen children. There was but one way this holy God and his beloved people who became adversaries against him could be reconciled. One who was equal with the offended one, and yet a brother to the offenders must answer the demands of divine law and justice. He must be the obedient servant of Jehovah. He had to be the perfect man and sacrifice in order to be accepted. Friends, please see Leviticus 22, verse 21. But his life of obedience could not make amends for the offenses of his chosen people. Christ, therefore, had to suffer, bleed, and die in the stead and room of his guilty people, enduring the just penalty of sin, which was death for their offenses. This, friends, I'll interject real quick. This is all about Christ's uh, substitution and satisfaction to God's wrath for us who believe. Bless the name of Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God and the Son of Man who has satisfied God and fully accomplished the salvation of his people. He was, as it's written in Philippians 2.8, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That was from preacher Jim Bird. Now, please sit up straight and pay careful attention to the following. I'll start off with a reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 through 4. 
For the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. There are three important things every preacher should preach. The first thing and the second is sound doctrine. The third and preeminent thing is also sound doctrine. The church is starving to death for the want of it. The preachers are becoming emasculated apologists for lack of it. And the world looking on is laughing at a limp, genuflecting thing calling itself Christianity for want of vertebrate strength, unable to stand alone. What a statement. Uh, that old timer went to be with the Lord. Uh, his initials uh, is I, middle initial M, Haldeman, H-A-L-D-E-M-A-N. Good message. It is written in Isaiah 45, 22, where our Lord Jesus Christ commands, Look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. The Master, again Christ Jesus, says in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, it is imperative that you flee to Christ Jesus today, not tomorrow, for none of us are promised another day on this planet. Today is the day of salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ while he may be found, and seek him while he is near. Only by being in Christ, the ark of our salvation, may we be delivered from the fierce wrath of Almighty God, which is coming soon upon the wicked. This about wraps up this evening's broadcast. I trust Almighty God will awaken his sleeping elect and draw multitudes of men, women, and children around the world to his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, the Lord our righteousness. Yehovah Sid can you bless the name Baruch Hashem, Holy One of Israel, Hakadosh Yisrael, Hallelujah. If you are led of the Lord to contribute funds to sponsor future American Vindicta uh, uh, broadcasts to help Doug and his family get his information, uh, and, and please send a donation. And also, if you're interested to help support me with uh, my brief 15-minute shortwave world band radio broadcasts, uh, it's 15, uh, excuse me, it's 40 bucks for 15-minute commercial-free episode. Uh don't send me squat. Does uh, if you want to send a donation, go to the website www.cr.com and get their physical mailing address to send your donation. I don't need to see it. Please remember to indicate that it's for the storm warning broadcast. Of interest here, there are millions of folks that don't have modern devices, but they do have old-fashioned, uh, inexpensive radios, and that's how they're able to listen to this gospel broadcast. I greatly appreciate those of you that have donated in doing so and in, in helping uh, Doug and his family. You're propagating Almighty God's everlasting gospel around the world into the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, the soon-coming Son of Righteousness, rising with healing in his wings unto those that fear him and his holy name. Talk about a glorious future in Christ, people. If you'd like to communicate uh, with me, then please feel free to write. The email address is the Lord be magnified at gmail.com and please indicate what country you're from, what life is like where you live. And uh, I look forward to writing you back. Uh, if you have any constructive criticism, suggestions, thoughts, comments, scriptures, hit me. Uh, I look forward to writing you back. Uh, email address one more time. The Lord be magnified at gmail.com. Great is our Lord Jesus Christ and greatly to be praised. Take heart, friends, our mighty and glorious King of glory, King of kings, Lord of lords, is inbound for his afflicted saints.
Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus Christ. Maranatha. Today is the day of your salvation. If you do not know Jesus Christ, my brother Billy and I strongly suggest you discover who he is. Give all your woes to him. Turn to him. Do not, oh, yeah. do not imprison yourself inside your mind. Your woes are not so big and so fearsome that the Lord could not take them from you. He says that his yoke is easy. I suggest for many of you who are burdened and bound, for many of you who are searching and you feel lost, the master is always there. He's always searching you. You just merely have to cry out to him. There's no Christian hocus pocus rituals and rites that you have to do. <laughs> Billy, am I correct? It's kind of yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if the Lord puts it, the Holy Spirit reveals Christ to you in your heart. Cry out like a baby. You don't have to be a theologian for uh, goodness sakes, friends. Uh, I personally, I like to pray the scriptures. I, in other words, reminding God of his precious promises. Yep. Uh, um, That's biblical. That's biblical. That's biblical to be yeah. able to, to bring back to the Lord his promises to us. That's Remember right. that he called you by your name, and he said that you are mine. Right. So stand stand tall in your victory in that. Um, for those oh, of hey, you, go ahead. Uh, let me interject. Uh, I got some really good news later. It's about the uh, my weblog and who and how many people are re reading it. It's going to blow you away, but we can do that later. Roger. Hey, for any of you who do have the uh, daily devotional, God is faithful from Pastor David Wilkerson. You turn to December 20th today. Let's begin reading from there. Yeah, please do. The danger of unbelief. And today we're going to read from Deuteronomy, Second uh, Chronicles, and I believe also Ezekiel 28. The danger of unbelief. God has embedded me a dread of unbelief. This dread comes from searching the scriptures for examples and of the dire consequences of doubting and lack of faith. I thank God with all my heart for revealing to me the harm and ruin caused by unbelief. We believers have taken this matter too lightly, supposing God overlooks the doubting of those facing great affliction and hard times. I once thought the Lord ought to give some slack to those facing seemingly hopeless situations. I thought, for example, of the disciples as their ship began sinking in a raging storm. My thinking was, Lord, they were just human. They were overwhelmed by it all. It was just a human response. Yet Jesus reprimanded their little faith. Yeah, I did. Yes, there is a time to weep. When Jesus whispers lovingly, go ahead, cry. I bottle every single tear. There are times when we are overwhelmed and we cry, where are you in this, Lord? There are eclipses of faith when fear overwhelms us. Yet we dare not linger on these fears and passing doubts. Instead, we must rise up and trust in the shadow of his wings. God has no pity for unbelief. I'm going to say that one more time. God has no pity for unbelief. And the whole scripture bears this out. It may sound harsh, but he will not accept any excuses. He grants no other option but faith. Unbelief is mostly caused by neglect of God's word. Faith is impossible without a constant input of scripture and a clinging to the promises. God has told me, stop looking at circumstances. Feed daily on my word. Memorize my promises. Pray with confidence. Your weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Whatever you are going through, even walking through the valley in shadow of death, God promises to be with you. Today, take a stand and start trusting in him. Your unbelief changes nothing 
but faith opens the door to deliverance. Choose to trust God. Amen. Yeah, that was good. You know, I was a creature of unbelief for a long time. So uh, was I. I. Yeah, I think I shared. I probably share this every week now. I, I don't care anymore. Um, which within itself, this whole little podcast thing has actually been quite a blessing on my life to be able to unburden good. myself and to be able to show others, especially men, um, that it's okay. It's okay to be able to explain to people that look like don't build me up in your mind to be some sort of a Superman. I go through plenty of my own hard times, my own trials, my own errors. Uh, Winston Churchill said, if you could, uh, if you could kick the person in the pants, the hardest who ruins your day, most of the time, you wouldn't sit down for a week. So, you know, I, I found out a long time ago that my problem was me always there's pretty much always been me and the thing that i had unbelief in was worrying about money where was where's the money going to come from lord how am i going to pay these freaking bills how many more you. things do i need to cancel to the point that i'm living on what i consider to be true meekness of of needing things and for the lord to humble me one night and he gave me a vision of the apostles. And when Jesus sent the apostles out, they only had the clothes on their backs. They only had a staff. They had nothing else. They were in their minds unprepared for the mission that they were set on. Yeah. At first they didn't even take a sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. They, they had a, they had a, a wavering spirit of unbelief. And Jesus said, no, nope, this is how you shall go. And, you know, for us to take that first step into believing in God, if you're not in the faith, if you're new to the faith, or if you're exploring what Christianity is, unbelief is what the entire world wants you to have. Um, th they want to distract you. They want to demoralize you they want to dehumanize you they want you to pit you versus your family versus your friends versus your own sexuality your own mentality they want you to be your own worst enemy thus if we have an entire country of their own worst enemies that country will destabilize and fall and i give you europe europe oh, is man. a prime example of a fallen kingdom that will Honor. probably never rise again billy and nope. It'll probably never rise again. Um, so I was read, uh, excuse me, I was, I was led to read Deuteronomy. So if you want to turn to Deuteronomy 18, we'll start with the abominable practices. That's in verse nine. Oh, stand by. I'm going to catch up. Uh, Deuteronomy 18. Yep. Verse nine. Thank you, sir. I'm with you. When you come into the land that the Lord, your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you. Anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead for whoever does these things is an abomination to the lord so i'm gonna stop right there i know of christians and i don't know where this comes from who still practice yoga who still talk about the chakras Not who are good. still they're caught up in this Eastern mysticism who still play with tarot cards. Do you know the entities that you can call forth? Man, that's flipping, terrible. Flipping a card. And you know, I, I don't know where Christians think that this practice is found in the Bible. Clearly I just told you in Deuteronomy 
starting at verse nine, these things are an abomination to the Lord. And yet, did you know, Billy, that there are Christian seances being held in churches? That's freaky. I'm not surprised, but it's freaky. Seances. I, I mean, what do you think comes through the portal you open up? Hey, can I interrupt real quick? Yeah. Did Did you and I ever talk with our friends on the American Vindicta about what happened when Kelly, Joe, and I um, were on a... Uh, we were house hunting and we saw this beautiful place when we were uh, in Western Belize and uh, right on the river. Um, and uh, we finally get back to the U S and uh, first thing we did was buy a, a, a truck and uh, we came up North. Uh, uh, we're in the central Northern region of the, michigan's lower peninsula it's it's stunningly beautiful and so we get to this house and i was stunned by the outdoor beauty so i just stayed outside for like 45 minutes and meanwhile kelly joe who's uh with the lord jesus now in paradise was talking to the the wife uh of who, who was selling this place and this woman uh i don't man it's gonna flip some of you folks out this woman had a strange countenance, almost like a pit viper. And she invited uh, Kelly Joe, hey, would you be interested to go to the next women's retreat? We're talking AKA Christian woman's retreat. She proceeds to tell Kelly and uh, they'll have a reader this time. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, uh, a consulter with familiar spirits where we just got done. You read in, Deuteronomy 18, 11. Uh, how does it, do you still have your Bible open? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do uh, ESV, how do they, uh, King James consulter with familiar spirits. How is it written in the, uh, ESV? So in, in ESV, it is, um, a person who practices divination tells fortunes, interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead, for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. Well, here's what happened. I didn't hear this, but Kelly told me uh, an hour or two later, but this woman said that uh, the last time she went to this so-called Christian woman's retreat, they had a reader, uh, a consulter with familiar spirits, oh. and the woman didn't know what I'm about to tell you. Uh, she told, uh, this lady who we bought the place from, you're going to have to lower the price of your home. That's on the river. You're going to have a, a married couple that are retired, but they look too young to be retired and they're bringing a dog with them. Well, at the time we had scooter and, that is the danger, uh, friends listening. Uh, this this actually exists. The the words that uh, the Lord put, uh, and then Doug read those uh, three verses or so. This is serious as a heart attack. Uh, that's a true story. I'm not fibbing. Yeah, you know it's very popular right now for people to go on these ghost tours to these haunted places, um, these Scoot abandoned out. buildings. Yeah, now you know the adventurist in me. Um, I would love to go to a huge abandoned building and, and not to look for sprites and spirits and, and phages and all this stuff, but merely just to clear it out, do CQB in it. Oh. <laughs> that's, Man, so better... that's, that's the military in me. That's what I would love to do uh, because I can put my MVG on and get all my cool guy gear and hit a place that I've never seen. It's covered in, you know, broken you know, windows and glass and wood. I enjoy places like that. However, I watch on the, on the occasion and uh, a, a friend of mine, Mondo Gonzalez of prophecy watchers. We both watch the same thing. We both said the same thing about this. Occasionally we'll watch this group of very questionable men called ghost adventures and Zach Bagans. And for the history of the places that they go to and what they discover, 
it's intriguing. It is intriguing. And if they just merely went to these places to just talk about the history uh, and to just, you know, experience the abandoned building, no matter what happens, I, I really wouldn't look too down upon that. But you have to be careful in the places that you go to that you know willfully is supernaturally charged. Like for one thing, um, did you pray about going there? Were you led yeah. to go there? Or what are you doing there? Are you going there to anoint the place, to bless the place, to take it back over in Jesus' name? Or are you going to walk around with instruments and uh, you know, trying to speak to the dead? Now, in our, our paleo research group, we go out to these places. Uh, we go out to caves where there's, you know, known burial sites. Uh, we go to known burial sites, burial mounds, and we're looking for the remnants of the North American giants. That's pretty well known now. Right. And we take some equipment with us not to find poltergeist activity, but because we believe if there is some sort of an antique technology that may still be ticking that may have some sort of residual energy that maybe our equipment will pick it up now we do not go to summon we don't go to talk to we're not there to talk to anybody except each other well i'm glad to hear that but yet we have been approached we've been approached um almost a kilometer down well brent would know brent knows which place the the well cave that had the um, that had the um, waterfall in it, and then Cave One, which we won't give out the the location of this place because Smithsonian reportedly dug a giantess skeleton out of there, and the same place that we're trying to get back into supposedly has a giant skeleton in there, kind of a king and queen. It's hey, also you can place, ha- it, you can have you can have that business. Uh, Doug, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather jump out of an airplane with my body weight of equipment, weapons, and oxygen at twenty five thousand feet at night than to go into one of those darn places. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I, you're nuts for jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I well, couldn't hey, do it. I, let but, me interject. Um, there, go ahead. Oh, I'll wait till you. Oh, thank you. Uh, something else that was really strange uh, in Belize was they had all these uh, Aztec uh ruins that have been somewhat restored and cleared of the jungle and there was one uh just 10 minutes away from we where we lived in the foothills of the mayan mountains and uh don't ask me to spell it but uh it's it's a mayan they called the place zanantanich and uh at these uh uh, religious uh false religious uh places um they would ha- uh they would have uh acts of sodomy yep. before you know ripping the people's heart out or taking their head off and there was a little restaurant parked right across uh, the street you had the uh, real mopan uh, the, the mopan river and busloads of busloads of mostly white people from America and around the world would get off these buses, take the ferry over to this wicked place. I I refuse to go visit it. Uh, that's kind of me. Yeah, Spooky. I mean, I've done my research. Me and uh, Tim Alvarino have talked about some of these places where the Maya were. Because uh, the Maya were probably the most violent culture were the Maya and Man. they, they were so big on child sacrifice to the extent that you had to ask yourself, why, who told you to do this? Like if I could go back in time, I would love to ask that question. Who told you, which one of your so-called gods told you that this was a good thing to take an innocent child and to horrifically rip their their chest open with an axe blade or a knife and, and to desecrate themselves and then they take the bodies of children and they put them in caves that are filled with water this one guy uh tim knows who i'm talking about he's an explorer and archaeologist that's out of mexico 
I think Tim actually knows him. Um, he scuba dives and he found this one cave, Billy, that had thousands, man, thousands of skeletons of children, probably under the age of 10, just man, scattered I, everywhere. I, it is, I, it, it's scary what people will do to each other, Billy. It's scary. I know. Yep. Um, I couldn't wait to leave that, that, that country it is just so filled with mysticism yep. and, uh, false, uh, so-called, uh, Christianity, uh, uh, false religion. There was a real spirit, a bad, multiple bad spirits, uh, on that place. And some of these people that would, uh, go to this church or that church and, uh, they they'd look at you lying through their teeth with a smile on their face. Uh, it was, I couldn't wait to leave that place. I'll never go there again. You know, it reminds me of Mexico and the cartels and not just the cartels, but there's entire villages. I know uh, I've, I've talked to some people who are from Mexico about this. Um, and, and there's a guy who's also, um, he's retired, I believe, or fled the country. Um, he, his name's Ed last name's escaped me. He's an amazing man to listen to. He's all over YouTube, but he's a former federal police officer, uh, for Mexico. It, the Satanism. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't he interviewed by uh former seal and slash CIA, Sean Ryan. Yeah. 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 Such uh, an amazing, ahead. that's a, that's an interview. The Sean Ryan show, um, that you guys need to check that out. Because people don't know, Billy, what the rest of the world is like. They don't know. Just in your southern border, these people who are making these incursions into America, you have no idea the wickedness. And violence. The the violence, the wickedness, cannibalism, sacrificing people still, um, Uh, occultism, uh, witchcraft. Tell the people again, it's Ed who? I can't remember his last name. I, um, okay but yeah right. if, you, if you look on the sean ryan show it's his first name's ed i know that but he's a fantastic guy to listen to filled with amazing stories and you know these are cop stories you know um the most dangerous place in the world i still believe is mexico i for the life of me don't know why we have not ever invaded mexico and just wiped out the cartels but instead, I, mean, I can always point back to the politicians. Let's get back to Deuteronomy. I want to try and hit some of these others. Um, so going back to Deuteronomy 18, verse 13, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God for these nations which you are about to dispossess. Listen to the fortune tellers and to the diviners. But as for you, the Lord, your God has not allowed you to do this. Do you think Billy and to the ladies and gentlemen listening that that was only for the Hebrew people, or do you think the extended people, the extended family, us Christians, do you think that applies to us as well? Uh, uh, yeah, here. it's, a, you I, know, be, it is be separate, saith the Lord and come out from among them. A- absolutely. Do not be a part of the world. You cannot take part Christians and abominations such as necromancy or interpreting omens or, or being a sorcerer or a charmer or seeking out mediums to talk to my dead relative. It's not your relative. It's not your loved one that they're seeking. Agreed. All right. If you'll turn with me to Deuteronomy 27, starting at verse nine. We're going to hear what Moses had to say about curses and blessings. This title, the curse uh, curses from Mount Ebal. Then Moses and the Levitical priests said to all Israel, keep silence and hear, O Israel. This day you have become the people of the Lord, your God. You shall therefore obey the voice of the Lord, your God, keeping his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. That day, Moses charged the people saying, when you have crossed over the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. 
And these shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall declare to all the men of Israel in a loud voice. Cursed be the man who makes a carved or cast metal image, an abomination to the Lord. A thing made by the hands of a craftsman and sets it up in secret. What he says sets it up in secret, he means to worship and pray to an idol. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who misleads a blind man on the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who perverts the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's nakedness, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with any kind of animal. Oh, by the way, bestiality is becoming popular once again in Europe and in America. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who strikes down his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. That means to kill them in secret. Cursed be anyone who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them. And all the people shall say, amen. And then at chapter 28, we, oh, we the, read about the blessings for obedience. Now there's only 15 blessings in there and the rest is curses. It's, it's mind blowing. Yep. All right. We ready? Ready. 28. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, be careful to do all his commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will set you above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you in seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Look at that. They shall be afraid of you. You pass like the opposite. I, I don't it, think you actually read your entire Bible. It's quite the opposite for most uh, so-called Christians. They're just not taken seriously or uh, go ahead. Well, this is kind of a reflection of revelation. When we don't take the mark of the beast and we don't bow the knee uh, to the antichrist and to his kingdom, revelation also explains that. Christians will be known throughout the earth. There will be something about us that is just known. They'll know that we are of God. Now, could that be because of some of these many curses that we don't commit? 
Could that be a, an outward appearance, a, a inward spiritual appearance that is projected outwards? Uh, honestly, I don't care. It's just the fact that I am separated from the goats. Um, but they shall be afraid of you. That is interesting. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity and the fruit of your womb and of the fruit of your livestock and of the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. At what point in time does any of this half-heartedly reflect the beginnings of America and the ending of America? To me, a lot of it. Yeah, I see it too, Doug. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. So those are the blessings. Here are the curses, curses for disobedience, starting at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed you will be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration and all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds, because you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease. Wasting disease. Anybody remember the zombie wasting disease that the deers and squirrels are going through? Yep. And, uh, that word, uh, well, you called it wasting disease. King James refers to it consumption, and it's emaciation. Uh, parallels with what you just commented on. Please continue. Yeah, I mean, you know, just you could, as you read this, you consider whatever nation you are in right now. I know here in America, we'll think of America, but. If I had to write all these down, I'm just crossing them off and checking them. Yep. Yep. That sounds like us. Yep. That sounds like what's happening. Of course. Uh, uh, everything in twenty Deuteronomy 28 is happening to America. Yeah. And it's only going to get worse. Let's continue. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation, and fiery heat. And with drought and with blight and with mildew, there's been an epidemic of blight among fruit trees in America. Do you know that? Yes. They shall, and they shall pursue you until you perish. And the heavens over your head. Now, this is talking about dust and a dust bowl. Remember how many times America gets hit with dust from Africa. And the heavens over your head shall be bronze. And the earth under you shall be iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder. From heaven, dust shall come down, and unto you, you are destroyed. That sounds like uh, stratospheric aerosol injections. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it, it could be anything. Anyone who's been through a dust storm, um, that's the reflections of, of, of my memory of it. But still, what it's doing is it's damaging your lungs, it's damaging your crops, it's damaging all of your flocks. I mean, that type of stuff to be breathing in is poisonous, it's deadly. Verse 25, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. 
and you shall be a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. And your dead body shall be food for all birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth. And there shall be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. I mean, man, to me, that sounds like skid row, all the myth that we've dealt with in America, all the. Makes me think of those horrific videos out of Pittsburgh, oh, uh, dude, Pennsylvania, San Francisco, Portland, Dallas, um, Fort Worth, San Antonio. Gosh. Every major city is dealing with this. Every major city. Man. Let's continue. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. Hello, confusion of mind. And that's an easy number to remember, friends. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. I refer to that all the time. Please continue, Doug. Uh, Verse 29. And you shall grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness and you shall not prosper in your ways and you shall be only oppressed and robbed continually robbed continually look at all those videos from san francisco that we saw i mean every single week the the and, and to the extent now that you have some major multi-million dollar billion dollar uh, companies that are completely moving out of the West Coast because of the robberies that the local yep. law enforcement is being told don't go and enforce the law, which to me is just the most asinine thing to ever even conceive of uh, by these wicked politicians. I'll, I'll make this distinction once again. I always do this. I'll say it again. Law enforcement should not obey politicians. They should obey the law, period. Um, yep. and, it's and often, I, I, I it's don't often know if we get off the, I'll let you finish. And then I got something to say, yeah, go ahead, buddy. Um, there's, uh, what you said can also be referred to as the, uh, less the doctrine of the lesser magistrate. So what Doug just explained in simple terms, the cops, it, it's, it, it's their duty. And it's the duty of uh, uh, lesser magistrates could be governors of the states when an evil edict comes from the district of criminals. It's their duty. Uh, and it goes down to you know, like, uh, the county level, the police. It is their solemn duty to disobey unlawful orders and uh, and be interpossessors, uh, like how Moses, uh, uh, you know, cried unto the Lord for, for the for the people it's a uh, rebellion against tyranny is obedience to God. Please continue. Verse 30. You shall betroth a wife, but another man shall ravish her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. That reminds me of a lot of homes that I've seen well, as, as I'm searching for homes in certain areas that are just incomplete. So many that are incomplete. And I just asked myself, why are there so many homes that are being built and they're never completed? You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not enjoy its fruits. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat any of it. Your donkey shall be seized before your face, but you shall not be restored to you. Sounds like something the government's going to do to us one day, doesn't it? Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, but there shall be no one to help you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people while your eyes look on and fail with longing for them all day long, but you shall be helpless. I call that the draft, not just enslavement, but also the I ne- draft. I never thought of that before. I think that's a really astute observation. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's eventually coming 33, a nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your ground and of all your labors, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually so that you are driven mad by the sights that your eyes see. I mean, that, uh, that, that would be the invasion of Russia and China. That's a, they have never been known to this nation. They've never invaded this nation. 
Um, and I mean, these are, these are two nations and all their ilk. These are nations that they don't know pity. They don't know pity. They don't know remorse. Like many Christians with their heads in the sand, many Americans with their heads in the sands would consider, um, as, as bad as some people say the American military is, we are about as benevolent as it can get to being a military. Um, even with all of our mistakes, you want to see brutality? Just wait till China comes. All right. Um, moving forward. Verse 34. Or excuse me, verse 35, the Lord will strike you on the knees and on the legs with grievous boils of which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. The Lord will bring you and your king whom you set over to a nation that neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone and you shall become a horror, a proverb and a byword among all the peoples where the Lord will lead you away. I'm, I'm going to throw this in there. I was shocked driving from Texas to Tennessee when I would have to stop and fill up my, my truck with diesel. How many times I would see something Hindu or something like Buddha that's being sold in all these little gas stations. I was shocked. And, and I thought back how many of my friends that I know who had little Buddhas and stuff that were, you know, from other nations, what you don't understand is what you think are these little collectibles. Those are their gods. Those are the entities that they pray to that you bought, that you put in your home. You should take those things and burn them. I agree. Verse 38, you shall carry much seed into the field and shall gather in little for the locusts shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes for the worm shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all of your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil for your olives shall drop off. You shall father sons and daughters but they shall not be yours for they shall go into captivity. The cricket shall possess all your trees and the fruit of your ground. The sojourner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you and shall come down lower and lower. Sounds like the invasion on the Southern border to me. Yes. He, he shall lend to you and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. All these curses, verse 45, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded. So I, I challenge, I challenge people. Do you think this doesn't apply to Christians? Do you think this doesn't apply to? To current nations right now, you think this was only for the Hebrews. I think you can see reflections of your nation, of our nation, right now, all throughout the Old Testament. The curses, the blessings. I mean, we were originally formed to be a Judeo-Christian style governance. And yet, very quickly, we abandoned all that. And by the late 1800s, America was completely changed from the way it was originally drawn out to be. And we have just gone do downhill ever since, Billy. I don't, I don't I see us going back. It's not being pestilent. Um, I'm just giving an observation. I, I don't see us going back to, to that great glory of the rebellion from Europe. Neither do I. So let's turn to Second Chronicles. We'll read this real quick. Second Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 12. This is titled, If My People Pray, from King Solomon. 
Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. We are not there. I think it was Ohio where in the either a courthouse or the Capitol building of Ohio, they erected a statue of Satan, uh, right. of, of, you know, whatever they they claim the goat entity is. Um, and then a Christian man came in there and, and beheaded the thing. Hey, yeah, I saw, I saw him being God. interviewed. Uh, I, I liked both him and his lawyer. <laughs> Yeah, um, I let me interject one thing. Uh, 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 there was a street preacher long ago who uh, he saw that it was the capital of Ohio. This is a small world. Uh, it was uh, one of those weird uh, amphibian type colorful flags being flown. He shimmied up there and he snatched that. No, I think he might have cut the lanyard, but somehow he got that flag down to the ground from a tall, tall uh, pole. He set that thing on fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's if we don't take a stand as Christians, then you are going to live in a land filled with heathens and their heathen deities that they pray to and their heathen rituals, which are all throughout America right now. And Christians will eventually just go, Oh, well, those are just common customs. That's just the customs of the land. Um, and then when you call people out for saying, is that biblical? Is that how you should be worshiping the Lord? They will get offended at you for talking about their festivals, their holidays, um, their, their little Buddha statues, you know, uh, the Christians who are like, I, oh, man, I'm all about peace and, and, you know, smoking DMT. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get where Christians think they're going to just get away with this. Especially if you preach, I mean, if you preach the word of God, and you commit any of these things, you're going to be in a world of hurt because oh, I everything that you say and that you do and that you don't say and that you don't do, the Lord says you will give account for it. Billy, how many people are ready to give account for what they're saying and what they're doing and what they're not saying and not doing? Well, I reckon it's uh, simply put, it's a remnant, which is a tiny amount of God's people that are. The Lord is helping them to be bold as lions and speak truth to authority and to uh, joyfully, uh, with boldness, uh, exalt and magnify the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think there's a whole bunch. Yeah, my wife was reading scripture to me the other day. I can't remember where she was at, but it, it was more or less saying that one in four. One in four. And then it, it actually reflects to this uh, stat that one in four Christians actually have a biblical worldview. That means one in four Christians say it's only Jesus, it's only God, it's only the Bible. The rest is false. And that means three other people who claim to be Christian acknowledge, recognize, and allow uh, to the extent that it's just okay. Uh, all these other things that are against Christ. Rude awakening coming for these people. Let's go to verse 19 of Second Chronicles um, chapter 7. But if you turn aside and forsake my statutes and my commandments that I have set before you, and go serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you up from my land that I have given you, 
And this house that I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And at this house, which was exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done this to this land and to this house? Then they will say, because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, he has brought all this disaster on them. Heavy duty. There is no wiggle room with God. None. So I want you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, we're going to hear about the prophecy against the prince of Tyre. Starting at chapter 28, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say this to the prince of Tyre. Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is proud and you have said, I am God. I sit in the seat of the gods in the heart of the seas. Yet you are but a man. And no God. Though you make your heart like the heart of a God, you are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have made wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver in your treasuries. By your great wisdom in your trade, you have increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you make your heart like the heart of a God, therefore, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you, the most ruthless of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. Will you still say I am a God? In the presence of those who kill you, though you are but a man and no God in the hands of those who slay you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of foreigners, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Now, he's talking of Satan. He's talking about Lucifer. And when you think in this context, my wife and I were doing Bible study the other night. And I read, you are but a man and no God. In Revelation, in Revelation, it says that the nations will abhor him. They'll look and they'll say, this is him. And he was considered to be the most perfect of his creations. He was a guardian cherub. If you continue, we'll, we'll continue to read. Uh, and it'll describe more of them, but what could be worse for Satan to have him torn from that pedestal that he had created for himself above God, so he thought, and then to be thrown down into earth, a mortal, a mortal man. You are but a man and no God, though your heart is like the heart of a God. And though you're wiser than Daniel, he's thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands, who knows freaking how long years old. He's very wise. He's very about himself and his wealth and his looks and his prides. Why he gathered wealth for himself, gold and silver into his treasuries. His trade was in his great wisdom. But he was so proud of heart. He was the first sinner. The first sinner. The first sin committed was not in the garden. It was in heaven. Remember Good that. Point. So if, as we continue, and, and I, my wife and I, this is speculation on Doug's part, okay? My wife and I were talking about this. If he is to lead all the armies of the world against Jesus in the end times and to be defeated. 
Could you imagine the leader of all the world's armies against Christ? Who knows what that technology looks like by then? And they all turn their backs on him and they kill him. I mean, of course, he's being thrown into the lake of fire. But when God says, I will give you over to the hand of foreigners and they will slay you. I mean, that to me, that goes into what Revelation is saying. Well, they will look down and say, this is he. This is the man who, who rose against God. Right. All right. Verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the signet of perfection. Listen to how they describe Satan, Lucifer. You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, sardius, topaz, and diamond. I, To me, this almost feels like being dressed down by like one of your superiors, Billy. Yeah. Um, you had all these precious stones on you, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and crafted in gold were your settings and your engravings. On that day, you were created. They were prepared. You were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. In the midst of the stones of fire, you walked. You were blameless in your ways. From the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst. And you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from my mountain, the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. By the multitude of your iniquities and in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out from your midst. It consumed you, and I turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have come to a dreadful end. And shall be no more forever. So I wanted to to read that and kind of end with that to let people know God's in control. Satan is not. Outstanding. Satan Satan thinks he's got it all figured out. He he thinks that, man, if I can just turn Doug and, and Brother Billy and all these people listening, if I can just turn them against the Lord. Just enough that they sin egregiously in front of him. Then he'll turn his face from them and he won't bless them anymore. They'll be cursed going in. They'll be cursed going out because I'll be the voice in the back of their head. No longer Christ in their heart. I'll be in there. If you are weak in faith or faithless, this is the risk. If you don't get into the word of God, and you don't go stronger, if you don't grow stronger in the presence of the Lord, if you don't yearn, yearn him, if you don't seek for him, search him out, seek his face, devote your day, devote your life, devote your family to him, Satan and it, all of his ilk who prowl the battlefield of this world like lions seeking men whom they can devour. Not will devour, can devour. Don't become their prey. Don't become their meal. He only promises you this, death, destruction, and stealing everything that you could have ever had, which is to be secured in Christ. It's not about your wealth. It's not about your fame. 
It's not about the money you got. It's not about the girls you chase or the guys you chase. It's not about your G5 airplane, your Mercedes you drive around in, like some of these so-called ministers of the word of God. It is about being following the Christ who was risen from the dead, being out of the dangers of the jaws of Satan, because that's that is that is the temptation of this world that we're not supposed to be a part of and being sanctified by Christ anointing ourselves in his blood and following out to him. If you're not doing those things, you are right in line for the buffet. Billy, we got five minutes. I'll give it to you, brother. Holy, holy, holy Lord God almighty, which was and is, and is to come. <clears throat> Thank you for allowing us to to brag on on your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for all that you are doing. No, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all that you're doing now, oh Lord, and thank you for all that you're about to do. Amen. And we we rejoice uh, in in your sovereignty. Uh, we rejoice in your free grace. We rejoice in the perfect and finished work that you have done, Lord Jesus, to save uh, hell-deserving sinners such as we are. Uh, please continue to strengthen, lead, and guide us for your name's sake, uh, protect and provide for us. Thank you, O Lord, that you continue to rebuke the devourer from amongst us for your name's sake. Thank you that you continue to encamp your angel round about them that fear you and that you deliver us, O Lord. Thank you that nothing is impossible with you. Uh, I pray, O oh Lord, that uh, you will touch the hearts of, of multitudes of uh, both young and old who uh, are led of you to, to listen to the preaching of Christ, and the reading of your holy word. And, uh, oh, Father, in wrath, remember mercy. Please hide your little flock in the Lord Jesus. Hide us in the day of your anger. And we pray that we be accounted worthy to escape the things which you are about to send upon the earth in the very shaking of the heavens itself, that we, that we may stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Doug and I, we pray one more time, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to end with this. We Christians are no better. We are no better than the Jews. Don't think you can't stumble and fall. Don't think you don't know those who do. But I'll read you scripture. Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repentance, repentance, my friends, walk a repentant lifestyle, spread the gospel, not the doom and gloom, spread the gospel, but there has to be at times a warning for some men and women who they don't want to hear the good news and they only respond to the hellfire and brimstone. I, I say that Jesus's love for you is sufficient. It's sufficient. It's better than that alcohol that you drink. It's it's more sufficient than the pornography that you watch. It's more sufficient than the drugs you're shooting up or, or taking. It's more sufficient than the things that you're seeking to, to fill within the treasuries of your heart because there's a void there. Everybody is afflicted in some way. Seek Christ and be free from these afflictions. But you got to seek him. You've got to repent. And you've got to pick up your cross and follow him. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Pray with your kids. Pray with your family. Pray over them. We'll see you next time. Stay frosty. Take care, friends.
Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall, and nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have, access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history. We're going to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready-made resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper. And that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food, how to prepare cooking in emergency situations, books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy, communication, first aid that you wouldn't think of, natural antibiotics, you name it, Bob has it. Now, here's the good thing about Bob Griswold that no one else does but him. You don't have to buy anything to talk to him. If you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information, readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly, 800-627-3809.